Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Committed Critics, a pop culture podcast where we're not only committed to our opinions, but also each other. Aww. I'm Kevin Lau. I'm Ryan Davis. And I'm Zachary Wright, and we are joined with a, yet another special guest star. Special guest star, who are you? Hi, I'm Matt, an old friend of theirs. It's good to be here. Hi, Matt. Long time no Matt. here. How are you? I'm pretty good. You know, just surviving Christmas time, so it's it's been good. Yeah, this is not your first time with a podcast with us, because uh, we have no. an old we have an old podcast called More Nerds Than Mics, um, what we did in college, and you can listen to that on youtubecom slash Studios. The episodes are still up there. Actually, now that I said that out loud, I should probably put those on Podbean too. Put it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> It's on Spotify, everywhere. <laughs> What's our topic today, Kevin? Well, you see, I'm not going to go by Kevin anymore. Uh, my cyberpunk name is just like the middle letter of my first name. So now I'm V. <laughs> uh, Zach, uh, do you want to go by Zachary or Zach for your cyberpunk name? It's just the middle letter, one or two letters of your first name. Actually, because we're playing cyberpunk, I'm also going by V. Well, all right. Well, can you do the V voice? Um... No, because I, I, I don't even know what voice he's doing. It's really, it's bad. I, I don't like it at all. <laughs> he just sounds like a tough guy. He's hitting the streets all the time. Like he's doing a really bad Keanu Reeves impression when Keanu Reeves is in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing good ever survives in, in Night City. Uh, and especially in the PS4 base version of the game. Oh, God. Yeah, speaking of PS... Okay, let's go around and see... what What's everyone playing Cyberpunk 2077 on? Because there's been numerous reports and bugs and glitches so let's go around red robin and see like what time i'm playing on kevin i am playing it on my pc um and i have a pretty decent pc setup my i think i have a intel i can't, I can't remember which one it's what's like your I gpu or i7 my gpu graphics card is a uh geforce uh rtx 1070 which is one step up higher of the uh, recommended specs that CD Projekt Red, ga- the developers of the game, gave out. Okay. Uh, Ryan, what are you playing on? I am playing it on a PlayStation 5. Ooh. Ooh. But that's backwards compatible through uh, PS5, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, so it's still you're still playing the PS4 version of the game. Version. Okay. Yes. Matt, what are you playing on? Uh, I am playing it on a, not day one, but a base PS4. Oh, and boy. It, and I have, I can back up most of the claims made by many people playing it on that version. So <laughs> uh, we'll get into that one second. I'll just say what I'm on. I'm on a, I have a 1060, uh, six gigabyte G, uh, NVIDIA graphics card. And I have a Ryzen 7 3700X running. So, I mean, it, it should be able to handle Cyberpunk, but not as well as. Yeah, you have, yeah. you have the, the minimum of the recommended settings. Um, it is still above the minimum settings. Right. So going back to Matt, so these uh, bugs, go ahead. I haven't had, I know there's been lots of reports of like crashing. The weird thing about my crashing is it only happens when I advance the story. Huh. And that specifically, not when the game gets to like stop and go or the frame rate drops or anything like that. But it's mostly been the combat where I've seen my bugs where enemies like see me through walls right yeah um they're i don't i haven't really looked into too many specific bugs people have seen but what keeps happening to me is that people keep like teleporting like right behind me they just spawn behind mm-hmm. you yeah or like right in front of me when i pop out of color yeah cover um another thing with enemies is that the closest thing i can describe it is like the way the vampires run in twilight <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like so, so it's it's so like they, they're doing like a neo bullet dodge, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's a design choice. Like they, some yeah. character, some enemies yeah. are supposed to do that. That but, is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. That's a whole thing. But I think because on a base PS4 for you, it might look terrible. It. Yeah, because <laughs> on mine, it like it looks like an intentional design choice. You have like the little warping effect of they leave a trail behind. Um uh yeah and you can apparently upgrade your 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 character to be like that but um it looks kind of i i bet it does look really bad on the base ps4 so matt what are your thoughts on the game so far from where you're at yeah what's your quick um your quick elevator review as they say in the biz so i think the story's interesting i think 
the dialogue's written well, but it seems like an empty husk of what other cyberpunk things do with theming and stuff like that. Like, mm-hmm. it feels like the writers made an attempt to be, were like, oh, this is what cyberpunk is, but then without actually understanding some of what really makes cyberpunk cyberpunk. So Right. Yeah, I, I can definitely, having finished the game, I can definitely agree with you on that. And you're only, like, a couple hours in. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan, what's your what's your quick review? Uh, I'm going to be the hot take on this one. I think cyber, the game is actually pretty solid, and I think, despite the bugs and glitches, it's a... Uh, solid game all around like i i'm happy with my purchase and yeah i i'm just yeah i'm the hot take i'll go into more detail about it but i don't have many complaints well you see you're playing on a ps5 though i know yeah i, I know it's a whole factor uh, it, other but. well other like game journalists all are saying the same th- say exactly the same thing but they're also playing on ps5s and high-end pcs so it's like it sounds like that if you can actually get the game running really well that people seem to really like it so you know it's more power to them i guess uh zach what you- which i know you guys have problems with well we'll go into details, yeah right? i don't have it i don't have that many problems like i get some minor bugs here and there and i get nothing i don't get anything game breaking or anything that looks weird uh but i'll get into that in a moment but zach what's your what's your thoughts oh uh, my what's thoughts quick review? are i wrote a whole i think five page review and i will put that in the description for uh, this episode on YouTube and Podbean or uh, mm-hmm. Spotify. But yeah, if you want to go read the review, my full thoughts, spoiler filled, because I finished it. I finished the main line. I finished most of the main character side quests that should probably be main quests, even though they're deemed side. But yeah, I think this game is a hollow shell, like Matt said. And really, it's just a, it's a video game boil down at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. There is nothing great coming from it there's a lot of good things and cool moments everything i did with pan am uh palmer great i love that interaction character wise but besides that like it's very hollow and at the end of the day just made me feel like it made me feel like i was playing a buggy video game like it's no god of war it's no last of us part two it's no anything like a monumental experience not a great story it's 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 not that great it's not good, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd probably give it... I was generous and gave it a 2 out of 5 in my review. I think only... Ha- I was going to give it a 1.5 out of 5, but I gave the extra half point because I feel bad for these developers who are put under such hard crunch conditions to get this game out, while these corporate... The corporate of the this developer of C Project Red really messed up and needs to... They really can't fix it, but they m- threw away all their goodwill at the end of the day, like when people think of C project red in their next game, they'll think of this and not all the good things that came from the Witcher three. They'll think of, wow, they really messed up. Mm -hmm. So Kevin, what are your thoughts? So, uh, I, I finished the game. I, I mainlined it and with a couple of side quests here and there, but so, but apparently according to Zach, I got the worst ending in the game, which is fine. I was like, whatever, there's multiple different endings and they're not going to all going to be winners. I was kind of disappointed that if you do, if you only mainline a game that you just get a sucky ending Um, because, you know, it's still like 25 hours to put into the game to get there. I'm not really much of an RPG guy um, for the reason of that. You have to put in so much time to get anything meaningful really out of it. And this is, you know, it's the same case here. Like You have to put in a lot more time if you want to have like the really good ending. But but like in terms of um, the actual gameplay, like. Like I said, I'm not dealing with too many big glitches or anything. Uh, I just I, I don't get texture pop ins. I I'm not bothered by the AI or anything. I have a very high tolerance for glitches and bugs because half the time I play video games, I'm trying to break them anyway. Uh, so I was able to like purposely break the game a couple times, and I did make the game crash at one point. But that but it was doing I was doing things that you know a regular player would not be doing. Uh, so but. I did not care for the story. Uh, I did not care for the the actual writing because it is translated from Polish. Oh. Uh, so it's the the it didn't, translation just some well a lot of the points of like the translation just did not feel right. There's a lot of game design choices that I thought when I was playing the first half of the game like oh this is really cool maybe these things will unlock later and I can just ex- really get immersed into the world. But then you get to the 
the, but as you, the more you play, the more like the cracks in the design start to show like, no, like that area is always locked off that, uh, that, that, uh, troublesome po poster that you see is never going to get, you know, acknowledged by anyone. Explain it's, or like, like dove right, into like yeah. there's a lot of, there's a lot of themes and subtext that, that get brought to the surface but then it's dropped as soon as it's mentioned because it's you know it does the thing where I did that I don't like that movies do, whereas like it just mentions the theme and then it leaves it alone. It's like yep, that's the theme of the movie right there. Boom, that's a lesson. Um, that's not how you talk about themes. It's not how you talk about messages. You have to incorporate that in the story, and it's just in like nothing is really incorporated into the story until like the very end, and then it's just but also just it feels so hollow because nothing was incorporated beforehand. Since you mainlined it, I and I put in the, I put in the extra hours for those side missions because I, I like Pan Am and Judy and stuff like that. Um, I didn't get the theme at all the I of the mainline. I had to create the my own theme in my head for my character who is V, and with the ending I got like slight spoiler I guess it involves Pan Am. Um, so I mean like I was able to create my own theme for my character and yeah it's an RPG you build up that character in your head like it's a role playing game you're playing the role of V. And so, like, I had to create my own theme for my character to, like, learn in a sense, basically. So, yeah, I don't think because I created the theme, I'm not going to give the game the credit for having a, quote, theme in my head. So. Right. Yeah. So in the end, for my personal experience playing it on PC, uh, I give it a 1.5 out of 5. There's not the I, I enjoy the gameplay. It is for the most part like i enjoy like how you know the shooting shooting enemies i enjoy driving around night city like the 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 it can doesn't control as well as other games but like for you know but like hey like i wasn't expecting this to be the greatest game ever i wasn't expecting it to fix my marriage that didn't exist uh you know it's it's a game at the end of the day it's it's not as cool as you know it was being presented as but that's you know that's marketing that's for you right Driving around Night City and like doing the side missions that are more character based was like those characters like of Judy, River, Pan Am, all of them. Like that was the most fun I had. Like I didn't really care. Keanu Reeves is stuck in my head. Um not that's not really a spoiler. You can figure that out. That's it's not the trailer. Spoiler, no. Yeah. Um but yeah, I didn't care for that at all. I cared more for like the character I was building and like the world the world building almost. So I don't know. Ryan, Matt, what do you guys think? Oh, I I definitely think the most fun I've had so far is driving around night city and just kind of stumbling upon jobs the only problem being that if if i drive too fast then at certain points it normally seems to be between like the different i guess boroughs you'd call them like just like a wall of like a grayish wall and like the pixels will pop up and then i'll have to sit there for oh wow x amount of time before it can finally pop in and then i can keep going oh. so i find myself like yeah, I find myself walking a lot because I'm like, well, that way to load. So, well, you you boost up your athletic stats, I guess. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I want to come back to that. I want to come back to that in the later half of the podcast, Matt. So keep yeah. that in mind. Ryan, what do you think? Um, I have so far enjoyed the story. I'm not as far as I think all of you are, but so far I've enjoyed the story. I've enjoyed building my character because something I do with games is. When I create my character, I will make a whole backstory for them myself, even if the game doesn't mm -hmm. give me the option to do that. Uh, which is, this one kind of gives you a, like, it gives you the, uh, the basis. I mean, like the blocks, but it doesn't like build them up. Mm -hmm. But uh, basically, I just play the game like I'm a, I'm playing the street kid. I'm gonna do all the options I think a street kid would do in this game. Um, I enjoy the side quests. Uh, some of these I I played The Witcher Three, and some one of the jokes I have is that uh, cars having existential crises I enjoyed much more than having to find an old lady's frying pan. <laughs> but uh, and I've en I just have enjoyed the con the RPG. I'm I feel bad because people are having problems and bugs. One I've had a few crashes even on being on PS Five, but I'm used to games crashing. My Battlefront Two old old battlefront 2 not what we got from ea but um uh even that crashed so much on me when i was younger and i really it, yeah no it crashed on me all the time i sometimes i ha see one of the things that I, ha I think back when i'm playing this is that that game crashed on me i could either get 
two hours of playing or two minutes of playing. And so all I would do is like, well, it crashed on me. Click again. Hopefully it'll work this time. And then however many times it goes. I Sometimes I would go a whole day clicking in and out of the game at least 10, 15 times. And it just, I've gotten used to like, if a game crashes on me, just literally click start back up. I'll play it again. I don't remember that at all about and, Battlefront 2, but that's a conversation for a different yeah, time. I mean, I played it on PS2. Yeah. I still play yeah. it on PS2. Like, I played it on I played it on PC. That's uh, why I was like that's probably yeah. Yeah, but um I mean this game, I like I said, I have no regrets in buying it. I it's pretty much what I expected I was gonna get. I have a few complaints, but that's more with the character creation than anything else. Uh, but mo- for the most part, I'm I'm not too upset. Right. I, I think I like gameplay wise, there is you know there's enough there to for people to enjoy it. And then like I um I've been watching some more videos on it, and like you can really like have the, the gameplay really adapts to your style of what how you frequently you do certain things. Like um I think the YouTube channel Girlfriend Reviews showed off that like yeah it could be like Mirror's Edge where you like literally just do parkour all over the place. Yeah, because and even unlock a double jump. Because I like do I like doing hack. I thought I was gonna be a guns person, and I ended up enjoying the hacking. And I pretty much stealth half the game. I thought I, I like I literally thought I was gonna be guns mm-hmm. blazing. I played guns blazing because I found, especially when I found like a, a a talking gun that does auto headshots. Um, it was like yeah, I'm just gonna boost like these stats. Uh, but it it does very suck very much that people matt included is just cannot enjoy the game on the console that it was made for like the box says ps4 on it um a lot of the other games uh like red dead redemption 2 so what they do is like they have the the they have like the base version of the game then they have the ps4 pro enhanced version of the game on the same disc and it doesn't seem like that you know i think it's automatically like the ps pro enhanced version uh on the game it doesn't like backtrack at all and for the base ps4 which is really really just bad like well, how were they people, having people on ps4 pro had problems oh yeah yeah i don't think it's even a ps4 enhanced version yeah i think it's a i think it's straight up a ps5 game they just put ps4 on the no 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 no. <laughs> it's a ps4 game that's what it is it's just a broken ps4 game yeah it's like you're not because ryan you're not playing the ps5 version you're playing the ps4 version with the with through backwards compatibility like they haven't remastered it yet for the ps5 with the ray tracing or anything i'm the i'm the conspiracy theorist on that the but that's that's just me well ryan here's the thing though there are examples of console jump console generation jumps where both where they released two versions and it worked mm-hmm. perfectly on both of them look at breath of the wild right sure the only problem i ever had on the wii u version was that there were some frame rate jobs but the game actually worked on that just as well as it does on my switch version Is CD Projekt Red being shady? Find out after the break. Looking for a spot to advertise your business, product, or service? You can have a personalized ad right here on Committed Critics. Email us at committedcritics at gmail.com for more info. And welcome back from the break. Man, did you have like a coffee or something? Did you play some Cyberpunk 2077? Uh, did you try to play it, but it didn't work? Well. Yeah, my file got corrupted. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, that, no. that did happen. Um, you lost like, what, two hours of game time? Yeah. Yikes. And that's the thing that sucks. Like, this is a technical nightmare. Like, there is no like CD Projekt Red messed up. This is a shady thing. And they just keep shooting themselves in the foot every time they open their mouths and try to be like, take a chance on us. Like, no, like the chance was taken when people purchased the game. Like, Refund my game, please. Like, yeah, just give me tw- give me sixty dollars. I don't even want the tax added on. Just give me sixty bucks. Like we live in these trying times. I wanted to have this game as a form of escapism, but then I'm playing the game and the stuff that truly bothered me wasn't until halfway through the game. With especially like well talking well talking a little bit on the racism of it as an Asian myself and seeing how I'm be, my race is being represented represented in this game it's like this is hurtful yeah in 2020 in a role playing game where like why am I why do you have these Asian characters saying this why is your main the only bat only good Asian character his only motivation is honor like that's it he does it for honor 
It's not like, oh, I got to protect my family. I got or some other real person thing. And it's just or it's the right thing to do. Like, it's not even exactly. like what. Yeah. And it's like, you know, this is like uh, this is like, you know, screenwriting 101. Like you, the, when you write an Asian character, that that's not their motivation. Like you if you if I turn a script in to like an, a show with an Asian showrunner, I'm getting kicked out. Like there's I'm not getting a job there. Um, and, and that's just with the Asian representation, like this black representation that just does not sit well with me at all. I'm not at the I'm not the person to talk about this. And I know Ryan hasn't gotten there yet, uh, but you know, you gone to knuckles, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I think that's the biggest thing is just like, it's this, they're trying to be like this, uh, like on the outside, they're trying to push it as this progressive, like, Oh my God, like the future is this. But when you look at it, it's very superficial. Like I'm, like I said, I, like, like you said, you're not the person to talk about like uh black representation and I'm not the person to talk about any kind of representation. Cause I'm a white cis male heterosexual man. Like I don't, but like I see these problems, like, the fact that I can choose to have my character be have a huge schlong, but like my voice is tied to gender, that's very superficial. Like mm -hmm. that's not how it should be in a like stretch of the imagination. Yeah. And I so you'll get some of these like edge lords trying to be like quote quote cool and trying to like they're just making fun of people in the LGBT and the trans community. Like that's not right at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Kevin, to your point about like Asian representation it's a game clearly so inspired by like Blade Runner or like Akira right. and like a Japanese cyberpunks and they clearly show that they didn't take their time to understand the cultures that they were getting this inspiration from a hundred percent a hundred percent yeah which this is a European company so it, that they really that like missed it <laughs> missed the mark somewhere uh, but like also like uh, it, 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 it feels like so and other reviews have talked about this and I want, I want to touch base on it, too. So it's the year 2077 in the game, but, you know, and it's cyberpunk, but it's not like it's 20. It's not 2077 from our universe it is tw it is 2077 in the cyberpunk universe, which was established in the, the, the late 80s, mid 80s uh, for the tabletop RPG. Um, and so like so they there are flashbacks that go back to like 2020 2025 stuff like that like this is clearly not our world however it is 2077 through the lens of american 80s pop culture like you know, the repre representation of race is the same exact thing the representation of sexuality is the same exact thing like it's still like you're t so like you're telling me that you know in 97 years give or take no one society hasn't really developed past the 80s mindset. Yeah, nothing's changed. Like, not even the mindset of, like, the po population. It, was just, uh, of, it's, it is American 80s pop culture mindset of representation. Like, you know, like, I feel like I'm watching Robo, like, a RoboCop remake shot for shot, but, you know, n not even through, like, a 2020 lens. It's still shot on the same 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 camera same everything same director and but like it's like somehow they got worse it's right it's and that's and i feel like to tie your point to matt's like that's what makes this game feel so hollow and even with like these shady like industry things like it makes it feel even less hollow because the potential of this game is like huge you could have this this could have been the next big thing but it's not. And like I said, in my earlier initial thoughts, people, when people think of CD Projekt Red, they're just going to think of all these issues and all the things they try to do to make a buck at the end of the day. Like, and that's the thing that's just so disheartening about it. Like they knew, like they said in their apology, they knew the game didn't work on PS4 and Xbox One, like their base consoles. They, they clearly stated that. They said we should and, have paid more attention to that when it was just like, well, what, what were you paying attention to? Like, and it's, it's like, clear that's they job. knew that. <laughs> Yeah, and it's clear they knew that because they only handed out PC um, PC codes to reviewers and outlets like IGN, GameSpot, and like different kinds of YouTubers, YouTubers and streamers. And so they hid it from the reviewers so they can get a better score and make more sales. And that's the thing that just pisses me off. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, it's really mind-boggling. But Ryan, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Uh, I one of my biggest points that I was kind of mad with was the uh, character creator. Uh, basically because they, I will say they hyped it up a little bit with the um, with how they said it was gonna be, and then when I got to it, I remember I was going through all the characters, and usually I'm I'm a black man, so I usually make my character try to look black, and I found that there was only like four different hairstyles, two of which had dreadlocks. 
one of which was an afro and the other was just kind of like a buzz cut type deal and so i was like oh cool i guess i'll give my guy a dreadlocks because that's all i can do in this the options for character creations are not as diverse as they like were like putting it out to be yeah i can give your character oh 100 like this is a like i don't know about you guys when i make when i make a character uh, i try to make it as close to me as possible like obviously with the but in the style of the game um i couldn't do that with this game like this was could you even make an asian looking character you can make an asian looking character but he looks like re like the eyes are either like really squinty or they're just white people white people eyes like it's there's no in between like i'm half asian but like you know it's still like not all asians have really squinty eyes come on uh but also it's just it was really hard to make something that looked kind of like me and also like i like to give my characters long hair um, because I occasionally have long hair in real life, and I think I just like that style. And when I see a game avatar, um, so the and the hairstyles are gender specific in the game, so I cannot give a male character long hair because it's considered feminine. Um, such as that, you probably cannot give a female character short hair. I think, but I think obviously, I think you have like obviously the buzz half mohawk kind of deal, but you can't give him like a, give them like a buzz cut. Um, but what about you, Matt? Like when you try to make a character, what what are your, what's your goal with that character? Um, so unless it's like some really outlandish game, I normally try to make him look as close to me as possible. And in this game, as a half Polish man, I couldn't even find features like similar to mine. Oh, wow. Like the only one I could find that like looked like me was like my nose and I couldn't find my jawline. I couldn't find eyes that really looked like mine or really anything. I was really surprised that you kind of a little disappointed i was really surprised that you cannot give your character glasses that has to be like an item pickup but then like you none of the glasses you find in the game are like actual glasses i assume it's because you're supposed to have technically cybernetic eyes so they're like why do you need glasses yeah but, no i get what you mean with that like yeah like i mean that's not like a real critique of it that was just more like a surprise so what about you zach how, how do you try to make your character um, it usually just depends. Like, I don't really play a lot of RPGs, but when I do, I try to make it look like me. But in this case, like, my like Jordan was sitting next to me, and I didn't really, like, I just kind of wanted to go through and play with the character creator, so we made a character together, and we made great Wal- great value brand, like, Walmart brand Keanu Reeves on accident, and we stuck with it. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it wasn't anything, I didn't feel attached to, like, the way I looked as V, because I never saw it. Like, I only saw it whenever I opened up, like, the menu, and my my uh schlong happened to be hanging out because my my pants fell off for some reason like your clothes just get taken off at random points in the game for no reason i'm like why why did i lose my pants right here like what happened it was is that a glitch because i never had that happen to me i don't feel it was a glitch but like like i had a side mission where my stuff gets taken from me and i'm like okay so i'm just naked right now and so like i had to like find all the stuff and, like this was after i beat the main line and i had to go find all my like stuff and like the marker was just not pointing me toward it so i was frantically searching for all my all of my stuff and when i got it like it like it just like i had like hit like get all and it didn't like auto put on for me it just sat in my inventory so i had to go through and like manually click and put everything back on and the way i wanted it yeah and this happened earlier in like the first mission when you get like put like a special suit on you don't have any of your guns because you're unarmed so like we're doing stealth in the first mission like I went to go pull my gun out because our stealth was broken because the game glitched and I didn't have a gun. So I just started punching this man. And I'm like, I was getting, <laughs> thank God I like realized what was happening. Pause, put all my guns back on and was able to like kill him. But it's yeah. just like, no, oh, yeah. Like, like it was just sitting in your inventory, but not in your weapon slots. Right. Yeah. It's just these like these, these silly. That desi- happened to me too. Yeah. These silly game design level. things that clearly can be fixed. Like, oh, like if the stealth is broken, auto equip. Like, seriously, that's not something like that's not groundbreaking here. But that, I will, yeah. I will say that wasn't a problem. But uh, I wanted to also kind of note the uh, voice for V, at least I had the male character. Like, playing with him, I did not see that voice on a black man. Yeah. Because I wish they had, had like, f- several different voices for, like... Because, like, I, I, one game I played, I just finished... Pl- um, I started playing Code Vein, which is a uh, Jap- uh, Japanese-based... An- it's like an anime game. Uh, it's anime Dark Souls, basically. But the character creator in that was so detailed where they had, uh, I think it was like 70 different hairstyles. They had a whole bunch of different skin tones. I could be green if I wanted to. Um, Stardew Valley has a better character creator than Cyberpunk 2077. 
Like and also like they had it's different voices. <laughs> yeah, and your voice shouldn't be tied to gender. Like that's not how you pick your gender and like. That sh- oh yeah, yeah, that's well. Th- it's also weird because you choose like, oh, well, I guess it's a male female body type. I guess I guess that's the option. But then yeah, the gender is tied to your tone of voice, which is not. Uh, <laughs> which also something I like. Uh, not how you do that. I laughed at that they made such a big point about like you can have a dick or a vagina, but then they never show it in the actual game. Yeah. yeah unless I guess if you glitch out because like. I woke up. I wake up in the shower and I'm like, "Why do I have underwear on in the shower?" But then you look in the main menu and you're naked, quote unquote. But you're not in game. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because like um, when I uh yeah, because I had that feature turned off because I was like, yeah, whatever. I don't need to see genitalia all the time. And guess what? It's everywhere in the game except for your own. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. Yeah. Any closing thoughts anyone wants to say? So I do. Like I said, there's there's a good game somewhere in there. It need it has it's throwing a lot of ideas, but the best part of the game is just driving through Night City, picking up random side quests here and there. A lot of the side characters have way more depth than the main characters, which is sad. But it sucks that you cannot mainline the game and get a full story out of it. It's like you can mainline Spider Man PS4 and get the full story. You can mainline Sunset Overdrive and get the main story, and those are. RPGs more so Sunset Overdrive than you know Spider Man, but Spider Man is still technically an RPG that has side quests that pop up here and there. Over Sunset Overdrive, hundreds of side quests all over the place. You still have the main story that you get all the emotional beats for for your character and in develop. Cyberpunk, like a lot of the side missions, should have been main missions. A lot of the major story beats are just pushed to the side, and like with no sense of urgency to them. But then you actually was like, oh well, maybe I'll do this one. I do it like I should have been here earlier. Like, and it's not like purposely to make you feel bad. Like, oh, you should have been here earlier. It's like, I, the player, was like angry. They're like, why did the game not tell me to be here earlier? Like, this is stupid. Um, but I will occasionally pop in the game every now and then, drive through Night City, see if I can, you know, explore around a bit more. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not really big into it. Ryan, thoughts? Uh, I'm honestly probably going to play this three different times all from the three different life paths because at the end of the day i enjoy what i enjoy the game i've enjoyed playing night city and i'm gonna play with each of them a different play style so i'm like i'm i was like hopefully at some point the character creator gets fixed and they add more styles to it but like i honestly couldn't couldn't be disappointed with my purchase and i'll have a full review when i actually finish the main story of the game and the sides and all that stuff matt yeah go ahead matt uh so i think the my biggest word i could say is disappointment Mm -hmm. because as someone who loves the cyberpunk genre like my favorite anime films akira Mm -hmm. uh, i chose street kid because of akira i wear a red jacket in the game because of akira just how disappointing it is in the grand scheme of the cyberpunk genre movie anime whatever genre you make a point to if you want a better experience in like i guess a cyberpunk kind of setting just to play the new deus ex games because the stealth in those games even some of the combat was just much more polished and more fun honestly yeah definitely yeah and i'm my closing thoughts can be wrapped up in the in my review, I wrote for it. If you want my full thoughts, go read the review. I'll, like I said, I'll link it. But ultimately, like I agree with Matt, it's a disappointment because you, when you're spoiler for being a corpo, you stop being a corpo ten minutes into the game. Like you just become a street kid. That's basically what you become, like a SV. Right. Um, uh, I played as a nomad, and like there is, I feel like there's the it work the, the being a nomad kind of works best in terms of like the context of getting it uh, through the story. Um, especially when you're working with Panam, like there's a lot of like cool like uh, dialogue options that pop up for specifically for Nomad because she is also a Nomad, but it's it doesn't change. I guess I guess I would have to say like being a Nomad does change the experience from my perception of my character, um, but I can't imagine. But, but Zach's been telling me everything about the Corpo path, and it's just like they really just drop <laughs> that. Oh, but Matt, what? What life path did you choose? Uh, I chose like I mentioned, Street Kid, which felt like the right, the what I would think would be the default choice because you're in a night city. Yeah, but 
Yeah, from what I've heard, it's not really... It's just like dialogue options, the only thing. Yeah, I feel like I should have picked a street kid. It, I feel like it helps... Yeah, I feel like the, it's really interesting when you're like working with like the kind of the criminal stuff where you have like you can call up people's like kind of bullshit and stuff like that but that's the only three thing i kind of noticed yeah so well there you have it those are our thoughts in cyberpunk 2077 kevin man what a game well ending to this this episode of committed critics uh you can follow us on twitter at committed chris at c-o-m-m-i-t-t-e-d c-r-i-t-s on YouTube, we are, like I said from last episode, we are separated from KFM Studios. Screw those guys. <laughs> you can follow us on YouTube at Committed Critics, same way it's spelled all over the place. Um, but you can also check out more Nerds and Mics on KFM Studios because uh, Matt, Ryan, Zach, and I are on there. Zach came in towards the end, but you know, you'll, list, you'll still hear him. Uh, you can support us on Patreon. Just a, you know, a dollar or two a month is super helpful for us. Please, please, I'm begging you. It's 20 20 please <laughs> uh thank you special thanks to our uh, sound engineer jordan smearman thanks so much for listening to another episode of committed critics and we'll see you next time goodbye <laughs> bye